The automation in this aircraft is advanced, as it is with most modern aircraft. But because we use fly-by-wire automation, our level of automation is at the highest. Automation is there to assist the pilots in their task by allowing for safe and accurate aircraft operation, provide fast and complex computations, and for enhancement of pilots' awareness through data management. It means you don't need to monitor all parameters. The system is doing that and will alert you to anything that is not in the ordinary. However, in any given situation, the pilots can always take over. No level of automation is there to replace the pilots permanently. So, pilots take over when things don't go as expected. Fourth golden rule. In this aircraft, there are three levels of automation provided. First level is the flight control loop. The flight control loop is not associated with autopilot. The flight control loop is where the pilots are manually flying the aircraft using the side stick, but the automation is provided through the flight management and guidance system using the flight directors. The flight directors will put up command bars, vertical and horizontal, on the PFD, telling the pilot flying where to put the nose of the aircraft. So, your commands for roll, lateral, and pitch vertical is given to you, and you just have to follow the command bars as they shift on your screen. This is the first level of automation. If you remove the flight directors and fly manually, well then, you are not flying with automation. The second level of automation is given through the autopilot. The autopilot loop is when the autopilot is engaged, but you are flying using the FCU control knob. In the clear shield that I just showed you, the FCU control panel here is the central portion of that glare shield. It allows for controls of speed, heading, lateral, vertical using altitude and vertical speed. And by selecting values here, the pilots can then pull the knobs to engage what we call selected guidance, and it allows the aircraft to fly with the autopilot what we have set. But it will continue to fly that speed, fly that heading, fly that vertical speed until you change the value on the FCU, the flight control unit. And if you don't change it, it will continue to fly what is set. Meaning, you're flying the aircraft using the control panel, but the autopilot is doing the flying. It still needs you to tell it what to do continuously. The third and final loop of automation is the flight management loop. This is where we spend 90% of all flight time. The flight management loop is the third and highest level and allows the autopilot to fly everything from its own database. The flight management loop uses the pre-programmed flight plan, performance, parameters to fly the aircraft, meaning it will fly. When it flies over the waypoint, it will automatically turn. It will automatically obey constraints. If given, it will change the speed according to the profile built in. It flies itself. When I say we spend 90% in the third loop right here, it's because after takeoff, we engage the third loop and we basically don't touch it until we are ready for our descent, in many cases, final descent coming in for an approach. The first and the second level is short-term assistance for automation, whereas the third level is long-term assistance. A scenario of an everyday flight will be you're taking off 
and as you're rolling down the runway, there's no automation. As soon as you rotate the aircraft and the aircraft gets airborne, the flight directors will appear guiding the pilot to where to put the nose to obtain a climb performance with V2 plus 10. That is the speed we want the aircraft to climb at. We are now in the first level of automation. Pilots will then, when it is safe to do so, engage the autopilot. Engaging the autopilot will either take the level of automation to the second level, where we are then flying using the FCU, or directly into the third level of automation. Let's say you've been given a, an ATC clearance to fly runway heading, and you are not yet clear to follow your departure out or your flight plan. So you will then engage the second level right here, set the runway heading, and fly as per ATC instruction. Once you've been given clearance to proceed as filed, and you want the aircraft to do all the flying, you will then engage what we call managed mode from the FCU by pushing the knobs and we're going into the third level of automation. As the aircraft is climbing, cruise, initial descent, all of this is most likely done in the third level of automation. As we come down closer to the airport, we may get radar vectors for our final approach. And that means we need to take the aircraft off the long-term assistance and provide short-term second level automation. We will pull the heading knob and we will put it into selected guidance and start the aircraft flying a specific heading. Once we intercept the localizer, if it is an ILS or the final approach course, the aircraft will then guide itself. It can then be flown in the third level of automation or you can choose to do a manual approach raw data and the flight directors will guide you down in the first level of automation. This was just a scenario of how the first, second and third level interact with each other. Always know the appropriate level of automation for your aircraft and what the intended outcome is of what you're doing. Always be one, two or three steps ahead of the aircraft.